Hi everyone, this is Dr. Gail Carson. Welcome to Living Regret Free, a program that shows you how to live a better and more joyful life. As an added bonus, I invite you to listen to an introduction to my Mindset Matters program, which ties into this so well. Go to www.sobmindset.com. It's free and I know you will enjoy it. If you'd like to contact me personally, drop me a line at gailcarson13 at gmail.com or go to my website, www.spunkyoldbroad.com and sign up for my weekly newsletter. Hi everyone, this is Gail Carson and I think you're going to be absolutely amazed at today's guest. Uh, Her name is Sharon Lynn Wyatt. And the interesting thing is that she will tell you more about you than you ever wanted to know just by your name. And you wonder how can someone learn that from their name, not from their handwriting? Well, Sharon will tell you why. She is the founder of Nemology Science, and you can tell their past experience, future health concerns. Oh, I've got the hiccups, everybody, so just bear with me. Future health concerns, their unique personality traits, their strengths, challenges, and even their purpose in life. Supposedly, she can tell instantly how a person really thinks, feels, and behaves, regardless of what they tell you. And she says that's because mnemology is a science that discovers personality secrets hidden in the placement of the letters within names. Each letter in a name holds a key to unlock one's true essence. A person's name contains information about that individual's gifts and challenges, and mnemology science can even reveal the first and last impression people remember about us. So you're in for a treat today. Uh, Sharon, this is really, really very interesting. How are you? I'm doing well, Gil. And right off the bat, what anybody would know about you subconsciously, if not consciously, is that you have a tendency to work and work and work until you drop, that you want to get your work done first, and then you like to socialize, that you can be overly sensitive to criticism because you're doing your very best, and so who needs the criticism anyway, and that you're able to accomplish anything you put your mind to along with having a generous heart and great self-confidence. Boy, you are right on target, own. That is absolutely true. Wow, there you go. Now you know all about me, audience. See, you didn't <laughs> even have to. <laughs> you didn't even even have to read my biography. Well, let's ask you first how you became an expert on names and how you were able to come up with this system. Well, I first of all, you have to know that I was a math major in college, and I have my math. So my brain is thoroughly trained in finding patterns and understanding patterns and then being able to teach patterns. And so when I was starting the seating chart of my seventh year of teaching, my brain started telling me about my students without I hadn't met them yet, you know, without knowing them. And so I was curious and I wrote down my first impression of every student based on what I was hearing my brain saying when I was making my seating charts. And I said, I'm going to put it away. And I'm going to look at it during winter break and see if it's accurate or not. I got to know the kids for who they were. And when I read what I had written at the beginning of the year, I was just amazed at its accuracy. So I said, okay, my brain has picked up some kind of patterns about the names. How do I make conscious what's unconscious? So I started with charts and I had eight Davids in my life at the time. So I made a column for every David and I said, what have I observed about this one, that one, that one, the whole bit? What do they all have in common? got to be in the name David what do they not have in common it's got to be in the other names and 15 years of literally trial and error looking for patterns observing talking to literally thousands of people I discovered nameology science I put it all together and it's just patterns and anybody can learn it and in fact I teach it in a 15-hour course this is amazing because first of all um, I have no math ability at all I mean I can add subtract multiply and divide but that's about it. I mean, I, and I'm really good at numbers in my head, but uh, no, no real math skills at all. So what happens if you change your name or you use a nickname? What happens then? Okay, well, first of all, I want to say that doing this system takes absolutely no math. It only takes the ability to see patterns. And if you change your name, it doesn't really matter so much because whatever's on your birth certificate That is literally the blueprint for your world. It even tells you in your life what years you're going to be focusing on what, and it lays it all out for you. Then whatever name you're going by says how you're going to go about completing that blueprint. 
For an example, all of us in our name have seven things that we came to learn. For example, Gail, one of yours is how to use your power of influence for effective change that other people can make and follow. Okay, so that's one of the things you came to do. And we all have things that we came to learn and to do. And that's shown in our birth name. And our name that we're going by tells us how we're going about fixing that, learning that, accomplishing that goal. So it doesn't matter either whether you use your married name or your maiden name. The pattern is still there. Well, the birth pattern is which is the layout for everything the blueprint now what's really fascinating is the first name is the essence of who you are if you have a middle name that's how you change or morph and that's where you go when you're under stress and your last name represents your environment so you have both nature and nurture represented in your name so when you change your last name as many people do when they get married or or move to a different country when you're changing that last name, it's literally saying the environmental influence that I'm being exposed to is changing, and now it's this new thing. Wow, that's amazing. That's just amazing. So, uh, again, you talk about, you know, the, the patterns, and I guess, you know, pronunciation doesn't matter either. You know, like Stephen Colbert, is it Colbert or Colbert? Uh, that doesn't make a difference either then. Well, it, it doesn't really when you're looking at all the names and for the patterns. However, what I have found is if you have a name that you're hearing a sound that you don't see the letter for, a good example would be Zena. It's X-E-N-A, but you hear a Z. Then you've got to interpret both the X that you're seeing and the Z that you're hearing when you're interpreting the name. Wow. So, But it's interesting. You can teach this to other people. That's the and, important thing. In 15 hours in my class, they go out and literally my students go out and the very following week, they will start doing one hour name readings for people and everybody's amazed at their accuracy. I've got it down to such a science because I've learned all the little mnemonic tricks to keep your memory going and how you can remember things and little cheat cards so that people can literally do this either after reading the book or taking my 15 hour class. Wow. So... Um, how, I guess I would ask you, how does mnemology science differ from numerology? Gail, I lost you. It's like you're not coming through. Okay, we'll start again from there. What's the difference between mnemology science and numerology? Okay, so first I want to say I don't know numerology because when I was doing and creating my system, I did not want to be affected by anybody else's system. I didn't want to be influenced by anybody. And so I don't know numerology. Whatever I can tell you is that numerology is based on nine numbers, zero through or 10 numbers, zero through nine. And then there's six different things or numbers that you get. Okay, so in nameology science, which is what I do, it's based on 26 letters. And then it's the position of the letters. So it's a lot more personal and detail oriented because there's a lot more choices. So and it's, and it's instant. Like numerology, I need to know the person's birthday. In nameology, I don't need to know the person's birthday. In numerology, in astrology, in all of that, you need the other person's cooperation. In nameology science, the minute you've introduced somebody or you've read their name, you can start analyzing and you get to know them. So is it, is it, uh, is it possible to compare names and know how people will interact with each other? I mean, could people use this to build more effective teams or decide who might be a really true friend? Or, I mean, I would, it, it's kind of uh, disconcerting to think you would go into a situation and may or may not, you know, feel a person is right for you, depending on what their name signifies. But you can compare two names. Absolutely, yes. Like in the movie, when Harry met Sally, they would have known that they already had books in common and they loved to read before they ever met each other. That would have been a great place to start those conversations. And indeed, in the movie, it works because they started it in that bookstore. In comparing two names and a lot of HR uh, 
departments call me and have me do this when there's conflict between employees and how do we solve that? You can literally see what the problem is. And the coolest thing is all the solutions are sitting in our names. So you can not only identify where the miscommunication is going to be or how this one doesn't naturally meet that one's needs and what simply needs to be changed, but the solutions are there. For an example, Gail, in San Diego, one of the companies that I work for, they called me and they said, here's the boss's name, here's the technician's name, and they both want to quit because they don't want to have to work with each other anymore. I don't want to lose either one of them. What are we going to do? So I looked at the names and I said, first of all, your boss is a micromanager, which just drives your technician crazy. On the other hand, your technician doesn't like to write. They like to do the programming and stuff, but they don't like to write. So all the written documents your manager wants driving him crazy. So here's a solution so that they can both get their needs met. At the beginning of every day, this one says, this is where your schedule is. This is what I need you to do. At the end of the day, the technician talks into the computer and says, here's a summary so you'll know what I've done so that you're keeping up. This is what went on today. Here's my summary. It takes me five, 10 minutes at the most. And then he simply emails that talk. She's staying informed and he doesn't have to write. So it solved both problems. Five years later, they're still working together. You know, it's interesting because actually uh, personality wise, it's the same thing that happens to salespeople. Great salespeople are promoted to sales managers, which is terrible because the salesperson makes a great, you know, they are terrific at what they do, but as a manager, they've got to not only manage people, they have to submit reports, they have to do all of that, which is not their forte. So we always say that great salespeople make terrible sales managers, but you're doing it through uh, mnemology, which is very, very interesting. And I would think... um, I would think you would be in high demand for for the skill that you have because it's certainly something I've never heard of before and would never have thought about before. So could this method be used to start a conversation with someone you've just met? But how would you do that if you are not aware of what mnemology is? Well, if you don't know what nameology is, you know, you're guessing in the dark when you're starting a conversation. If you do know what nameology is, how you start a conversation is literally placed in the first vowel of the first name. So, for example, Gail, your first vowel is an A. And for everybody who has the first vowel of an A as you're reading left to right on your first name, start a conversation with, you know, can you recommend a good book to me to read or how can I get more information on? And then you name a topic. Because A, people love to learn. And they're usually good readers, even if it's only magazines. You know, they love to learn new things. And so you always ask them, where can I learn more about this or that? Or or what do you know about this? And they'll start talking because they love to share information. Now, if your first vowel is an E, those are people that literally come from the heart. And they're all about aesthetics and how do things look. And if you can say, hey, you know... I hear that you're really good at knowing how things look, you know, could you help me with, is this outfit appropriate or or am I going to go give this talk to somebody and what would you recommend the colors that I would use or what would I wear? Or they're the ones to go shopping with you, you know, and you ask, where would you find the best deals on blue jeans nowadays that have the best fit? Anything to do with clothes, with spas, with decorating a house, any of that stuff These people are so observant. They have such a beautiful eye. They can see that stuff so clearly, and they love touch, and they love feeling. Now, if your first vowel is an I, you're going to start a a conversation about family because these people are always all about family. Family takes up the majority of their time and their attention. So you simply say, hey, do you have any sisters? Are you married? Do you have kids? You know, what do they like to do? Get them started talking about their family. All you have to do after that is listen because people can always, eyes can always talk about their family forever. O's, if the first vowel is an O, these are the people that are the CEOs and the bosses. And so you ask managerial questions or they're also great nurturers and usually have pets. So you ask questions, you know, do you have a dog? You know, how do you take care of your dog when they do this? Or how did you train them? Or how did you, whatever. You ask about managerial things, how to nurture and about pets. If they have a first vowel of a U, you tell a joke. Use our entertainers. They're interesting in how they put their words together. 
And so you start a conversation by starting and saying, hey, I heard a great joke that I thought you might appreciate. And have a few jokes up your sleeve. Get the conversation going. You'll all be laughing together. The wise are the hardest ones to start a conversation with because they're the most gracious hosts. They're always concerned that everybody else is having a good time. So with a why, you always say to them, because they love uniqueness, you say, you know, I'd like to go on a trip or travel or get something that's very different for, you know, my friend. I'd like a present that's very different or I'd like to go to a very different place in traveling. What do you recommend? And they can talk to you about their travels and about the different kinds of things that they own that very few other people would own because they like things that are unique. And those are the easiest ways just to start a conversation. Very, very interesting. Boy, um, I would think that when you meet people, your mind is just going like a bat, you know, crazy because you are already deciding who, what, when, where, why. (laughs) So, uh, and if you, if you, if you know all of these things, Sharon, I would think that um, it's a great way to, to know how to motivate others because you know what their hot buttons are. So I would think that, you know, this is a great way to really manage your workforce as well. It is. And it's funny, when I was a principal of a high school, all of my social studies teachers used to come, all 15 of them used to come together and ask me a question instead of just sending the department head. And one time I stopped him and I said, you know, you're the only department. How come it takes 15 of you guys to come ask me a question instead of just one or two? And one of the guys popped up and he says, we've noticed that you're able to get all of us to do anything you want us to do. You're able to talk us into anything. And if all 15 are here, we feel like we have a better chance of saying no. (laughs) (laughs) That's great. That is great. Well, you see, he was thinking too, whoever that person was, right? (laughs) Right. And talking about hot buttons, when I work with lawyers to help present what words do they have to use when they're presenting a case to a judge, You want to be able to use terms and words that let your client know that you are doing a bang up job for them so that you get paid. And the other thing is you want to be able to hit the hot buttons of the judge so they have more empathy for your client. And so we talk about those names and comparing them and what words and terms they need to use while they're presenting the case so that the number of cases they win increases. That's almost like uh, what Dr. Phil did, you know, with... um with when he analyzes people for the jury and so forth, but you're doing it with names more than anything else. On the other hand, um, I guess you would need to know in those kinds of situations who the witnesses are going to be. You would have to know that ahead of time. And uh, would you actually help? don't. You don't. Because what happens is when I help lawyers pick their juries, I'm on Bluetooth. Okay, and I just know ahead of time what that lawyer is looking for in the person. Do they want somebody who can be swayed by emotions? Do they need somebody who's going to just listen to the facts and forget the emotions? You know, what kind of juror are you looking for? And as they say the name into the Bluetooth or out loud, if I'm listening on the Bluetooth, I can literally say this is an emotional person. This is a fact based person. By the criteria you've given me, this one is going to meet that criteria and what percentage? And so then they can weigh and say whether they want that person or not. That is amazing. So that's all done just by them uh, giving you that information over the phone or, or however, or you listening in, et cetera, et cetera. Correct. So I can sit there next to them, but I find it just as easy to do it literally on Bluetooth while they're in the process. Wow. That's amazing. So is this something that you came up with, Sharon, or... Uh, did you get it from someone else or did it just pop into your head like you said one day or how did this all come about? It was 15 years of trial and error and looking for the patterns and seeing what was working and what wasn't working. It was 15 years of work. Plus, you know, I'm very intuitive and so that always helped and I've been a meditator since I was 18. So I think I got guidance along the way subconsciously, consciously, however it worked. And But it took 15 years to develop it all out. And then I went and tested it in over 70 countries where I was asked to speak because people had heard about it. And then we always tested it. We'd have 100 people there, and we'd do this test to see the accuracy level. So by the time it got presented to the public as a whole and not just word of mouth, like the first book came out and everything, it had had 18 years of development and testing before I ever wrote a book and said, here it is, guys, this system's always accurate in the 90th percentile or higher. 
So even in all these different countries, because I know I've worked in 50 countries, you spoke in 70 countries, uh, and there's different languages and a different way, different names in many of these countries, and it tested in all of them. Is that correct? Correct. And what happens is it works as long as they're using our lettering system. Now, the one year I spent in China and the two years I spent in Japan trying to figure out from their language how to translate it over, it, it doesn't work. You, the main things hold, but the subtleties are just gone when they translate to an American name from their Chinese name or their Japanese name. And I just looked at it and I thought, I just don't know enough about Hanji and Kanji and able to figure out their system. So as long as you're using our lettering system, it doesn't matter what language is being spoken, the accuracy holds. Wow, that's amazing, just amazing. So how, how did you get the word out? How did people find out about you and, and how did you introduce this to the public? Well, it's really word of mouth. I was giving talks on spiritual topics earlier, and then I'd say, hey, guys, why I've got you here, would you just play with me a little bit? I'm developing this thing on names, and just play with me and see what you feel and how accurate it is. And then I would ask them questions, and they would ask me questions. So it really went to the same people that I was already giving spiritual teachings to on the interrelatedness of all the different religions. And so that same group got me started and they'd call and they'd tell a friend or they'd tell somebody else and I'd get a phone call saying so-and-so told me about you and we're interested in having you here. And that's literally what happened during that 15 years that I was developing this. And everybody I met, even on the airplanes, I used to think, oh, these poor people that sit next to me on the airplane, because I'd say, you know, I'm working with developing the patterns and names and what they mean. And right now, I'm working on this combination. Do you know anybody whose name is has that combination in it? And tell me about that person. <laughs> you know? and, and so I was bugging everybody and talking to everybody. And considering that I was basically shy, learning this system and, and having to do this research and now knowing how to fit in anywhere that literally within five minutes, everybody goes, oh, we want you to be our new BFF. Look at how well you already know me. I mean, it's such a difference from me being the observant person and I was so shy that the first three years I taught school, I literally memorized what I wanted to say every day before I went in so that I'd make sure I had the right words and can think on my feet. That's amazing. Well, you certainly aren't shy now and you certainly know what to say and you certainly don't hesitate with your words. So it just shows everybody listening that if you practice anything that's important to you long enough and well enough, you're going to be OK with it. In fact, more than OK, you're going to do an extremely fine job. So I think that is fantastic. Now, you said you have a book. What's the name of the book and where can people get it? Well, we have two books out. One is Know the Name, Know the Person, which is all about how do you discern someone's personality from the name. The second book is Know the Name, Know the Spirit, which is what does the soul want and what's your spiritual purpose and why are you here Okay, on the earth? The third book comes out January 7th, and it's called Know the Name, Know How to Connect. And I'm even going to give the ebook version of that away for free. And then if you want the hard copy, it's as cheap as we can get it out there without a profit, because I so want to contribute to people being able to get along with other people better. And then at the end of 2019, we're going to have the book coming out, Know the Name, Know the Health, because your health predispositions are also lying in your name. Really? Amazing. So you can tie health issues to the name as well. Yes. For an example, uh, A-N is a very popular combination. And A-N in a name literally indicates that uh, you've got to watch your immune system because that's part of your weakest link. Now, if it's in your first name, it means you're totally in control of it. You can let it happen or you cannot, but you can fix it. It's totally up to your control. If that combination is sitting in your last name, it means you've inherited that weakness or you've inherited that challenge. So another one is like the ND, like in the name Linda, but actually ND shows up a lot. And that means you've got to watch your knees. And again, if it's in your first name, it means you're totally in control. So I would always be aware of when I'm playing a sport or when I'm getting in and out of a car, because that's when we twist our knees, you know, to take care of my knees. Now, if it's in the last name, it means I've inherited knee, knee problems. And so what am I going to do about it? And I always say, if you know ahead of time where your weakest links are in your body, you can make a choice. So wow. and the reason I spent so much time 
trying to figure this out because this was the hardest ones to find the combinations and ask everybody about their health and listen to all their ailments, um, which is normally not something I would choose to do. But I thought it was so important because my mother had me uh, see an as- astrologer versus I told her in eighth grade, I said, I just think differently than other people. I think I need to see a psychiatrist. I mean, what? It's so interesting, but I'm going to have to stop you because we're out of time. Can, can you tell us how to reach you and how people can get in touch with you and how they can get your ebook? Okay, so the ebook will come out January 7th, and how to get in touch with me is on the website, knowthename.com, and that will also be where you'll get the, the free ebook at that time. Wow, this has been terrific, Sharon. I could talk to you for another another 30 minutes. So <laughs> you heard it here, folks. Uh, go to Sharon's website. Um, and and find out from her, you know, if you want to more about that, maybe more about her course. Get her uh, ebook. Um, and again, her her um, website is knowthename.com. Thanks so much for being with us today, Sharon. It has been a pleasure. My pleasure, Dr. Gail. It's wonderful. Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoyed today's show. I choose my guests carefully. So if you have someone you'd like me to interview, please drop me a line at gailcarson13 at gmail.com. In the meantime, check out my intro program, Mindset Matters, at www.sobmindset.com. See you next week.